What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing, talking about, discussing Spider-Man No Way Home. There are 100% going to be spoilers. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll try to keep it open and non-spoilery in the beginning, and then once I'm kind of done with it and feel like, you know, there's nothing more to say, then I'll kind of warn you guys. So if you want my overall thoughts, you can stay for the beginning. If you want the spoiler talk, we'll talk about that. I have a couple other videos planned to uh, talk about the ending and stuff like that, that I'll hide, you know, the thumbnail and the title. I'll, I'll disguise it so nothing gets spoiled for people that haven't seen it yet. So my overall thoughts on the movie, again, non-spoiler. I loved it. I loved it to death. Um, there is definitely messy parts. There's things Things that aren't exactly um, the easiest to kind of like justify and hard, obviously, to kind of express that without going through the entire movie, which we will do. But you know, I overall absolutely loved it. It had all of the payoffs that you would like want this movie to have. It, it I would guess I would maybe even echo what other people have talked about this film, where the villains, I think a lot of the villains did extremely, extremely good. Tom Spider-Man does phenomenal. I mean, he really, if people thought whatever they thought, negative about him, let's say, in 1 and 2, I think they fix a lot of that, and they establish kind of going forward what he will be. You know what I mean? So I, I absolutely love that. I thought he – you know, I've always – loved him. I thought I honestly have always thought he was a really uh, solid pick. He really encapsulates who Peter and who Spider-Man is. He yeah, just the kind of vibe you get from him. I think he he uh, has always done. You know, whether the writing was good or reliance on Tony Stark or whatever, but he himself, Tom Holland, I thought he's always been, you know, an excellent Spider-Man. Okay, so I thought he was excellent. One person I really want to shout out, and you can do this, I would say, without even getting into spoilers, is Zendaya as MJ. I thought she crushed it. Uh, it's not necessarily, like I want to say surprisingly, but not because she's a pretty solid actress overall. She was very good in, you know, one, they barely used her. They used her in, in kind of weird ways. Two, I really thought she was one of the better characters in two as well, but they just uh, compared to what they ask of her to do in this movie, it's not even the ballpark. Is it's a different ballpark actually. And same thing I would ar honestly argue with Tom, and same thing I'd honestly argue with Ned, and uh, like the range, the range that they make these guys go through. But specifically, you know, to to just give Zendaya kind of a shout or MJ, she did phenomenal. She sold several scenes, including scenes towards the end that again we won't talk about right now. To me, it had really everything I kind of wanted from a Spider-Man film or anything I wanted from this movie, it delivered. I mean, if you're going in for like a popcorn flick, you got it. If you're going in for like a more emotional deep level, I 100% think you got it. Uh, again, I think there's some messiness and does some things get, uh, they take a little while to get going. Yeah, but I thought over, I mean, uh, really, a lot of the criticisms of, of, of this movie, which there are some, okay, and, and some of them are valid, I really think you can kind of just squash and say, you know, the best parts of this movie are the best parts. They are going to be legendary. People are going to be talking about them literally forever, which I would second, and I would also, you know, I, I kind of want to go back to see it just for specific reasons. So, yeah. Again, very, very difficult, but I absolutely loved it. Obviously, nobody is waiting for my word on this movie to go see it themselves. You all, you are all you know, going to see it or have seen it already, but I absolutely loved it. Okay, so now, cut. We're going to jump into the spoilers, so turn away now. If you haven't watched it and you just kind of wanted to hear my initial thoughts. Uh, I, again, the, the thing hasn't changed. I absolutely loved it. Uh, you know, seeing Andrew and Toby is so special. And I'm not even, and we, we talked about this, right? I think I am de uh, definitely a fan of like their Spider-Man and them as, you know, themselves. I think I am a fan. The movies are a little iffy. Uh, as I've talked about, like I really do like The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and even 2. The best of 2 is really good. The worst of 2 is really bad. And Toby's, I'm not as big of a fan of the movies 1 through 3 as, uh, no, 3 is just a wild ride. I actually am a fan of that one. But like 1 and 2, I'm not as big of a fan as other people, but I'm still a fan of them. And so seeing them and seeing the interactions not just with Tom, but with each other. I think a lot of the great moments came with all three of them together or even just Andrew and Toby. There were so many because it's like, yeah, you're geeking out because like Tom gets to see them, but also like Andrew has never seen Toby before. So like that's a that's kind of a movement or a moment in time all on its own. And so seeing that happen is incredible, right? So I really those three I mean Tom did such a great job with with what he had to do even with like the Aunt May thing, which I thought was perfectly perfectly executed. It wasn't tacky. It wasn't lame. Kind of was like 
throwing it, you know, like where you didn't really know you knew something was wrong. And it's like, would you kill her? Maybe. But then it's like, oh, maybe, well, she's acting like she's okay. So maybe she'll make it. And then she does die. And he has to kind of go through that. I mean, I loved it. There was that scene. And then the scene, even when MJ and Ned met him on the rooftop where he was like crying and just, they were all in it together. Beautiful. I mean, I literally, I could not ask more from them or even from you know uh, Aunt May herself uh, in that sequence. I mean, I thought it was perfectly, perfectly done. And then the other Spider-Man obviously did, or other Spider-Men did insanely good. The MJ thing, like I said earlier, how I think she's honestly a standout star towards the the very end when he has to say goodbye to them. I thought the goodbye was perfect. Um, there's definitely problems uh like kind of rationalizing it to yourself like okay well how do they forget certain things and not others and when do the villains go back to in their timeline if they now don't have powers or their powers are fixed kind of like in doc ox case like how exactly does it work there are definitely it's not perfect it's i would say even harder to wrap around and kind of like mentally in your head be like oh okay i i i'm okay like they you know they just said it and i'm gonna go along with it i think it's very hard and it's also even harder than like the snap thanos snap but i do like i'm fine with it okay and then in terms of you know him having to say goodbye to them okay for them to forget actually him saying goodbye to strange dr strange was awesome as well dr strange and him don't even have like the greatest relationship and you could tell from dr strange like you know, you're a good kid and like, you know, I'm going to miss you almost in a way. So I love that. And then when he has to say goodbye to them at the end, oh my God, it was, it was again, perfect. That's why I said earlier, even like Ned's actor, you don't really ask that much of him, I think generally. And he did a really good job kind of opposing Zendaya at that moment, right? Who was definitely the more emotional, like trying to figure it out. You know, she was saying like, well, we could come up with a plan or why haven't we come up with a plan? A very good like balance to that so I love that entire scene I loved her selling it I'm like you know it's not what she wants she doesn't want it he better come and find her and tell her and you'll know, catch her up to speed and then the final final right when he goes in I loved it I loved you know what I loved about this movie too was kind of like lingering on shots like letting things play out probably longer than you would expect in movies like even that cafe scene at the end was kind of long and like multiple times he was going to tell her and then she would do something else where he kind of questioned well should I or should I not I love that I love that it was like extended same thing even with like the spider-man or when you know they were asking Andrew to like prove himself prove your spider-man that was a long scene and they just kept it going same thing with then when Toby came through and going through all of that very very long or when they were just kind of reminiscing to each other like on the rooftop or even in the lab when they were figuring things out long scenes of nostalgia but not like necessarily nostalgia I mean could you say it's nostalgia bait could you say the villains are nostalgia bait yeah but I think they paid off so I wouldn't say it was bait because you weren't like fooled into a trap it worked it I mean it paid off I I could I could watch Andrew crack Toby's back for like five hours. I could watch them talk about the villains they've faced and how their web shooters work for hours. I mean, you could just do that, and they pull it off in small scenes. But again, like when you're watching it, it actually was a little bit longer. The action I thought was awesome. Doc Ock I thought was absolutely. I don't. Want, I'm trying to like just rapid fire because I don't want to forget anything. Doc Ock I loved. Uh, quite an arc, you know what I mean? It's like, well, you're so evil and all this stuff and you're kind of like not like one dimensional but you're very like over the top evil kind of in the beginning and then he goes through kind of an arc of his own which I thought was actually in extremely good basically becoming you know a good guy halfway through say when we kind of got his introduction so I loved him I mean Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin what can you say that hasn't been said right he killed it he killed it again um you know they kind of had everything they needed to have with him like you had the mask but you only really saw it twice one when he was on his glider in the beginning and then when he breaks it and the rest of it he's not even wearing you know the glider or the I guess the actual like you know costume with the mask on it anymore but like him talking to himself they you know anything that you could say like oh I wish they would have had that I mean they had kind of they had almost probably like a checkbox and they Matt Murdock check you know I mean they just had everything possible I would say you know and it's hard because like I just watched it you know what I mean and maybe like three weeks from now or you know when the movie comes out on blu-ray or whatever like I'm definitely gonna watch it again right you watch it multiple times months go I mean opinions change right I remember walking out of Star Wars episode 8 
okay? And I actually liked it. And then the more I talked about it, the more I hated it. And I, you know, I eventually I got to that point where I despised that movie. I'm not saying I'm going to despise Spider-Man, but I'm trying to think, like, right now, I would absolutely say it's my favorite. It's my favorite Spider-Man movie. Easily one of the best superhero movies, but definitely the best Spider-Man movie. Now, again, I just watched it. Will that change? Maybe, but as I've talked to you guys before, I'm really not that big of a fan of many, you know what I mean? Like, what other Spider-Man movie, for me, is going to oppose it? And I know to some people, like Spider-Man 2, and I don't really count into the Spider-Verse because animated versus non, not necessarily fair. But, like, for me, I don't really think anything can contend with it. So I, you know, I, I think the first half was very different than the second half. That's probably, if I could isolate a weakness, if that is a weakness, I would say that. Like, the second half... It was fast, but also, I mean, it did things really well. We got explanations from the villain. There was actually some arcs there with villains. Even, like, Electro was kind of a standout, right? There was some good stuff throughout it, but definitely, you know, it did pick up that second half. And the second half, like, thinking about it now, definitely has my favorite, like, all the banter between them, the epic fight, when they were swinging and they were swinging each other, and the Green Goblin versus Tom Spider-Man fight, and even Aunt May's death, you could say, and that was probably a little bit past the halfway point of the movie, right? Uh, him saying goodbye to MJ and Ned. Like, those are, right now, thinking, those are easily my favorite, you know, scenes from the movie. They're all in the second half. I guess the Strange versus Spider-Man fight was good, but it's stuff we saw in Doctor Strange, so it wasn't exactly different. And I would argue it was more Doctor Strange because of, you know, the mirror dimension and all that stuff. It was more him, like his movie, than a Spider-Man movie. So I could see, you know, for those that say, you know, they're, they don't really like Spider-Man in the MCU, like that kind of world around him is kind of hurting him himself and, you know, reliance on others and it's always got to be a team-up thing. The first half of the movie really kind of was that. Now, I didn't mind it. And I'm sure there, there were definitely weaknesses there. And I guess there was my least favorite half. There's two halves. That was my least favorite. Second half was my most favorite. But and it did have some good stuff. It had some good jokes. Not every joke hit, but definitely jokes did hit. And by the way, the writing was a lot better than the trailers because the trailers, all the writing in the trailers seemed god awful. Okay. Some of the stuff that was in the trailer that turned out, you know, in the movie still wasn't very good. But like overall, it was. The writing, I think, was phenomenal. Again, the performances by everybody I thought was phenomenal. So, you know, again, I'm sure there's things you can criticize. I still don't exactly wrap my head around everything associated with the ending and people forgetting Peter, but I want to make a specific video, maybe in a day or two, where we'll talk about that specifically. But for now, in terms of just basic thoughts, I thought it was it was incredible. I'm so, so happy that, in my opinion, they absolutely pulled it off. Uh, I, re I really think they absolutely nailed it. You only have you know, one opportunity to bring in these two, I guess specifically Toby to a lot of people, right, beloved characters and then, like, nail it. And I really don't think there's any argument, right? Again, you can call it nostalgia bait, but I don't think it was bait because I think it worked and, like, it paid off and it's things that I kind of wanted and they did it anyway, you know what I mean? So I, you only have one chance at it. And I thought they killed it. They absolutely crushed it. So overall, phenomenal. My movie of the year by a mile. But I didn't like very many movies this year. So it's kind of unfair to say that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed. Bell icon turned on. Thank you for watching. Really do appreciate it. I hope to see you all on the next video.